Acceptance is the way of transformation. Acceptance is indeed the way for transformation. When you reject something, it does not help. Rejecting is not the way of awareness. Rejecting the mind will not lead you to awareness and clinging to awareness cannot become the way. You cannot reject it and at the same time you cannot cling to it. You have to understand the mind. Mind is very useful mechanism. It helps you to express and manifest all that is within you flowering, whether in conscious layer or unconscious layer. Certainly the mind has not to be rejected at all. Instead it has to be accepted. Whatever thoughts arise in you, these have to be accepted. If you reject anything, it will remain there. You will not attain freedom from them. Rejection means repression. Awareness is total acceptability. Total acceptability is the way of awareness. Anything rejected never leaves you. It simply moves from conscious layer to unconscious layer. From the lighted part of your being to the dark layers where you cannot face it. And actually you become oblivious of it. For instance, when anger arises in you, you are conscious of it, you can correct it. When you go on rejecting that you are not angry, you do not get anger and things like these, then what happens? Anger goes in the subtle layers and there you will not be able to recognize. All the so-called religious people are full of anger, suppression. Anger is suppressed energy. You, it becomes difficult for you to understand and you become oblivious of it but it is there, more alive than ever. It is better to face the enemy than to keep the enemy at, the, at your back. That is far more dangerous than he can attack you any moment and you will not know. And I have told you not to reject the mind. Mind is a beautiful mechanism. Indeed it is one of the miracles of the existence. Man has not yet been able to make anything comparable to human mind. Even the most sophisticated computers are nothing compared to human mind. A single human mind can contain all the libraries of the world. Its capabilities are almost unbounded, but it is a machine. It is not you. To get identified with it is wrong. To make it your master is erroneous. Also to be guided by it is wrong. But to be the master and the guide is perfectly right. When you allow the mind as a servant, it is of tremendous value so do not reject it. Instead make the mind subservient to consciousness, to awareness, to your being. To reject it will impoverish you instead of enriching you. I am not against mind. I am totally in favor of transcending it. And if you reject you cannot transcend. How can? Use mind as a stepping stone. It all depends upon you. You can make it a hindrance if you start thinking that mind has to be rejected, denied and destroyed. Or you can make it a stepping stone if you accept it. If you try to understand it, in the very effort of understanding, 
the mind transcendence happens in the very acceptance of the mind the understanding comes and in the week of understanding transcendence happens you go beyond it you become a witness but never cling to awareness clinging is bound to happen if you reject mind then you need something to cling to and you will start clinging to awareness then and clinging is nothing but mind functioning from the back door remember this clinging to anything whether it is awareness or anything for that matter is nothing but mind functioning from the back door clinging is again a process of the mind but that is bound to happen to people who reject and repress the question is of transformation the mind has to be used rightly if you learn the art of using the mind correctly then there will be no clinging to awareness otherwise afraid of the mind that it may come back you will cling to awareness remember in clinging it has already come back it is there it is already there clinging is mind non clinging is intrinsic to awareness the key word is clinging that leads to the mind and non clinging is intrinsic to awareness you cannot cling to awareness if you cling it is just a mind phenomenon your awareness too is just a pseudo thing created by the mind because you are asking too much for it it is false utterly false if you have to cling to awareness then it is false instead of clinging be a witness to it and in that being a witness to it you attain to transcendence and transcendence is the way of transformation then you will realize that awareness is the state of no mind when you do not cling to it then awareness becomes divine illnesses are myriad and their nature is varied but there is only one health the quality of health is one health happens only one way and always the same whether i am healthy or you are healthy the feeling of health is the same remember diseases are millions wrongs are millions the ways of unconscious are millions but the right key that unlocks all the doors the master key is only one and rather cutting the branches or pruning the leaves cut the very root and what is the root mind and clinging to anything there are many people who go on pruning the leaves or cutting the branches such are the moralists a moralist can never be a spiritual the moral person is little bit stupid he is stupid in the sense that he thinks by cutting the leaves he is going to destroy the tree he is not going to destroy the tree this way you can cut one leaf the tree will respond with three leaves instead the foliage will become thicker you cut one branch and the tree will pour its sap and juices into another branch and another branch will become thicker and bigger 
This is what happens in your life. You go on rejecting one thing. Cutting means you go on rejecting. You got problem with one person, you cut him off. You prune him. But that is not the way. Somewhere else the problem will arise. This is the art of making the rose plants healthier by pruning them during the time when it is a hibernation for the plants. So when you cut off one relation, sever something, then you go against, then it goes deeper into you. It appears in new form, just as new foliage, new branches appear on the tree. Someone is against sex, so he cuts off the sex, represses sex and cuts that branch. Now the whole energy becomes anger. You will find stories in Indian scriptures, stories like the story of Durvasa, a great saint who repressed his sex totally and then he became angry. The sex became all anger, just red hot anger. It is bound to happen. You cannot destroy any energy ever. It is not possible in the very nature of things. Energies can be transformed, but never destroyed. You close one outlet, the energy will start flowing from another. If you close the front door, then from the back door it will start flowing. And from the back door it is more dangerous. It is like your enemy is standing at the back and from there he can attack you any moment and you will not know. And it makes you a hypocrite. Your life becomes double standard. You start living in a dual way. You say one thing and do another. You show one thing, you are another. You become more and more split. My emphasis is also exactly the same as that of Atisha. You come to me with a thousand and one problems, but my answer is always the same. If you come with anger, I say be aware of it, be a witness to it. If you come with greed, again I say be aware of it. If you come with lust, again I say be aware of it. Awareness cuts the very root. It is the only remedy, the universal remedy. What is the root? Unawareness, darkness, unconsciousness is the root. One can be angry only if one is unaware. Try to be angry and always and aware together. Try to consciously practice that you are angry now. Can you be? Try one day. Try to be angry and aware together and you will find it impossible. You will be either aware or, un or unaware. When you are aware that anger will not be found or when you may be angry and awareness will have disappeared. Up to now nobody has been able to manage both together and I do not think you can prove the exception. Try it. It is impossible. You may think both are happening but if you minutely watch you will find when awareness is there anger is not there. And when anger is, awareness is not. And awareness is the root cause of all illnesses. Awareness is the only medicine, the universal remedy. It applies to everyone, all the times. Buddha says, I am a physician. And when somebody asks, you again and again say you are a physician. 
but I do not see any medicines around you. What medicines do you give? Buddha responded, my medicine is only one, it is awareness. I prescribe awareness for everything and it has not to be brought from the chemist. You have to change your inner chemistry to bring it. Yes, indeed, you have to change your inner chemistry. Right now, your inner chemistry functions in such a way that it produces an awareness and unconsciousness is toxins. It can be changed. It can be re-automatized. How to do it? You have to find in the sutras that are to follow. But remember, one method is enough to correct all wrongs. The method is awareness. The sutra is awareness. And how will you know that you have attained it? Awareness is something inner. It is so deep that nobody can see it. Still, if you become aware, everybody who has a little intelligence, who has eyes to see, will become aware of it. Remember, as awareness happens at the inner core, compassion starts radiating, love starts radiating and overflowing. And when I say love, I am not speaking of love making. I am speaking of compassion which is devout of all kind of passions. Buddha said, light the candle of awareness in your heart and your being, your entire being will radiate compassion. Compassion is the proof that the inner candle of awareness is lit. Unless compassion happens, remember, you must be deceiving yourself. You must be doing something else than being aware. Compassion is the aura of awareness. Compassion is the aura of awareness. For example, you can try concentration. Concentration is not awareness. And person of concentration will never show compassion. Compassion is not the consequence of concentration. Concentration means you are focusing your mind, narrowing your mind on to one point. Concentrated mind becomes very powerful, but remember it's, it is a still mind you have not transcended it and very powerful and more dangerous than ever concentration is the method of science awareness is totally different it is not focusing awareness is unfocused alertness for example right now you are listening to me you can hear it in a concentrated way, you can be focused on me, then you will miss the birds and their, and their songs as well. Then you will miss the noise on the road and the sound of the cars speeding on the roads. Then you are not aware that your mind has become very narrow. Awareness is not the narrowing of the mind, it's the disappearance of the mind. Although the noise is there, but you are still listening to the words that are forming. The narrowing of the mind makes the mind more of a mind. Hence, the Hindu mind is more of a mind. The Mohammedan mind is more of a mind. The communist mind is more of a mind because these are the processes of narrowing the consciousness. Hinduism, Christianity, Islam, Jewism are all the process of narrowing the consciousness. Somebody is focused on Das Capital or Communist Manifesto, next one is focused on Quran and on Dhampad, somebody is focused on Gita, or the Bible, but they are all focused and their consciousness is narrowed. 
these are all focused people they create narrow minds in the world they create conflicts and they do not bring compassion for thousands of years religions have existed but compassion is still a dream we have not been able to create a world that knows what love is what friendship is what brotherhood is what compassion is yes we talk we talk too much of all these beautiful things in fact the talk has become nauseating it is sickening it should stop the more you talk of brotherhood and love and this and that we have talked for thousands of years for no purpose the reason is that concentrated mind becomes narrow becomes more of a mind and love is not the function of the mind compassion is not the function of the mind instead it is a function of beyond mind love is function of no mind you can call no mind heart both means the same no mind and heart are synonymous awareness means you are listening to me and focused of course alertness is there you have not fallen asleep but alert to these birds they are chirping to the wind that passes through the trees alert to everything that is happening in this precise single moment as the birds emerge out of me concentration excludes much includes nothing awareness excludes nothing includes all awareness is a state of no mind you are yet you are not focused you are just a mirror reflecting and echoing all there is beauty in it and the silence in this is too suddenly you are and you are not and the miracle starts happening when you are and you are not in this silence you will feel compassion compassion for all beings it has not to be practiced either it comes on its own atisha says awareness inside compassion on the outside compassion is the outer side of the awareness or the aura or the exterior of awareness awareness is your interiority your subjectivity compassion is the way of relating and sharing with others compassion is the way of sharing your awareness your understanding with others in the outer world compassion is the aura of awareness awareness comes by accepting not by rejecting so this is the way of transformation and transcendence beyond dualities and of for today